So we'll get started by settling the body, adopting a stable, comfortable, upright position serviceable for meditation. So we think about keeping our feet flat and our back straight, torso open, hands in the lap, right over left with the palms upturned and the thumbs gently touching. Our eyes are gently closed or slightly open, making sure we let in enough light to remain alert. Try to avoid slouching or leaning. We also let go of any unnecessary tension in the body. Relaxing into a stable, comfortable, upright position. And begin to let go of attending to the environment, allowing sights and sounds to be as they are without investigation. constraining your awareness just to the body and mind. Concentrating that awareness in the present moment by attending closely to the physical sensation of the air, moving into and back out of the tip of the nostrils. Noticing quickly when anything other than that one physical sensation is arising in the mind and without judgment or frustration, lifting your awareness up from that distraction and placing it gently but firmly again and again on the breath.
and then generate a broad altruistic motivation for your time. Thinking of using this time to cultivate, stabilize, beneficial, constructive ways of thinking and acting. Cultivating these mental states that allow oneself to remain connected to a sense of peace and ease, calm, generating these states of mind that when they arise tend to give rise to actions that are beneficial for others. I'm thinking of reducing, ultimately eliminating the tendencies and the habits that are not productive. not beneficial, those that agitate and disturb our own mind, that are painful to experience and when they arise often give rise to actions that cause harm to others. thinking of wanting to engage in this process of genuine inner transformation in order to be of greater and greater benefit to sentient beings. will continue contemplating the eight verses of thought transformation combined with again that visualization of Avalokiteshvara the Buddha of compassion So we reassert that visualization above the crown of our heads. Visualizing have a look at Teshvara about the size of the palm of one's hand. Visualization made of light. With four arms and one face, the hands of the first two arms joined at the heart, holding a wish-fulfilling jewel, the second right hand holding a crystal rosary, the second left hand holding a white lotus, He's seated in the fadra 
position on a lotus and moon disc. And he's adorned with exquisite silks and jeweled ornaments. And an antelope skin covers his left shoulder. And you think that Avalokiteshvara is the embodiment of perfect compassion. Perfect love, perfect wisdom. Then the next verse that we will contemplate, verse four, whenever I meet a person of bad nature who is overwhelmed by negative energy and intense suffering, I will hold such a rare one dear as if I had found a precious treasure. Whenever I meet a person of bad nature who is overwhelmed by negative energy and intense suffering, I will hold such a rare one dear as if I had found a precious treasure. So here we can understand that we from time to time come across those who struggle perhaps with being quick to anger, who seem to have a judgmental, overly critical mind those who perhaps demean others to bolster their own sense of self. In these instances, we recognize that They are afflicted with intense suffering. And as all ordinary sentient beings, just like oneself, they aren't always capable of overcoming the arising of afflicted states in their mind. Ordinarily, we respond with aversion, with anger. But if we are serious about wanting to progress along the path, And it becomes necessary to meet with difficult circumstances. 
to learn how to practice patience. Respond with loving kindness. So these are opportunities for our own growth. Try to think back in your own life. Do you sometimes or even regularly meet with people who seem to have stable ways of relating that are difficult? Trying to bring one or two of these people to mind. Notice what naturally arises in the mind. Their sense of discomfort distance, pulling away, to transform that experience by looking at what lessons you could learn from responding more constructively. What opportunities for your own practice you're being presented with?
I'll try to see if you can recognize that people in this category are also bringing you to enlightenment. Is there a way to even feel excited to have these opportunities or at least move in that direction rather than aversion and anger? think that in response to our practice of Alakiteshvara, of the crown of our head, pours forth light rays and wisdom nectar. Entering through the crown of our head and completely filling our body and mind. Carrying with it the capacity to overcome self-grasping and self-cherishing.
when you're ready, we'll come back together. And we'll dedicate. So recollect your altruistic motivation and think that by having engaged in this contemplation, you actualized that motivation, created positive energy in the mind, which you freely offer for the benefit of all sentient beings without exception. Thinking may it serve as a cause and condition to eliminate war, conflict, poverty, disease, disasters, all painful inner and outer conditions. May it fully ripen the minds of all sentient beings. May they quickly meet perfect teachers and arise in a state of full enlightenment. May I too achieve the state of enlightenment in order to work for the benefit of sentient beings perfectly. May any obstacles facing the Guru's long life be completely dispelled and may I and all sentient beings come under the joyful care and guidance of enlightened beings in this moment. May we be guided and protected until we swiftly achieve that state of enlightenment. Thank you.